half in the bag. Wait, not yet. We still have to watch the Banana Splits movie. This presents the Banana Splits, starring Flegel. Bingo! Wait, maybe, just maybe, movie theaters will reopen. You know, you're right. I never thought I would actually say this, but at the very least, movie theaters filtered out some of the trash that seems to litter the landscape of Amazon Prime. Who would have thought that Nicolas Cage would sully his good name by appearing in some low-budget garbage movie? I mean, the man won an Oscar. Yeah, I know. You know what, Jay? In the future, I don't think we could be so reckless. No more random mode, no more trusting Rotten Tomatoes. We're gonna have to do research of our own on movies. I would have thought a film starring Nicolas Cage would be quality. Boy, was I wrong. I mean, it has a major star in it. And, and you, trust, you trust that. You trust when you see a big name in a film. You never think it's gonna be like an asylum level piece of turd. But it was. First Nicolas Cage, who's next? John Travolta? Bruce Willis? Ugh. I seen the trailer for his new film, Breach, and it looks great. Hey, you wanna watch this? Oh, it stars Liam Neeson? It's gotta be good. <laughs> it's birthday time! <laughs> well, Mike. Willy's Wonderland let us down a rabbit hole of a very small and very specific subgenre of films. Yes. Uh, which is movies that are ripping off the success and popularity of the video game Five Nights at Freddy's. Right. Which in turn is a reference to Showbiz Pizza. Well, tucked in between there is the 2008 documentary, uh, The Rock, Rock of Fire Explosion. Yes, which we ha have a, conveniently have a DVD copy of right here. There it is. This documentary came out, yeah, like you said, 2008. Uh, let's look at the timeline. Okay. Um, I don't know anything about Five Nights at Freddy's. I watched the video game trailer for it on YouTube because okay. you told me what it was. <laughs> but... I think all this, I did a little timeline, and I, I think all this started with this. Yeah. This, uh, Of course, it started with this documentary is about weirdos who like to purchase the leftover um, Showbiz Pizza Bear band yes. members and restore them. Yeah, maybe for people that don't even know what the fuck that is, just a little backstory. It was a, a pizza and game place for children in the 80s. Showbiz Pizza Place with over 60 electronic games. Pizza baked fresh every day. And the stage show extravaganza on three stages. So come for the pizza, stay for the fun. Uh, spun off into Chuck E. Cheese, which... Chuck E. Cheese bought them out. Chuck E. Cheese bought them out. Uh, did Chuck E. Cheese go out of business last year? I, I think they went bankrupt last year. Don't know. I wouldn't doubt it due to the pandemic. Yeah, I'm surprised but, they were still around. Yeah, Showbiz Pizza Place. Uh, I don't know where it was all located. Certainly the Midwest. Yeah. I think down south a little. I went there. I had birthday parties there as a little kid. Maybe birthday party. Yeah. Um, as, as seen in the famous Rich Evans photo. Although <laughs> I probably have childhood birthday photos from there, but my mother didn't put a shirt on me that said, fuck the birthday boy. <laughs> um, uh, she knows proper comma usage. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you, you would, you, there would be a big table. There's the party room, right? There's the game room. Yes. And then there's the party room, and the party room would have three to 12 large tables, and at the head of the table was a king's chair. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that's where you would sit if you were the birthday boy or girl. Right. And you would get a little crown, I think, and um, all the, your friends would come and there would be presents in the middle of the table. And you'd go play games, you'd run back and forth, eat pizza. And then, of course, the highlight was when <laughs> Billy Bob, the bear, and his band would perform. The Rockafire explosion. Yes, and it would happen, I don't know, every 15 minutes or something, and then, uh, duh, duh, duh. <laughs> and, you know, even as a kid, you thought it was kind of strange. <laughs> And not magical. No. I was like five. No, I thought it was. I thought the animatronics were neat. I didn't go to showbiz. I went to Chuck E. Cheese, um, but it was just fun to watch these robots. But I didn't think they were like. I didn't believe them as being real. I don't know if any kid did. Maybe two and under. Okay. I think once you hit three, that's when the magic wears off. <laughs> when you realize there's something horribly wrong. Then you then you want to ignore the band and just go play in the ball pit. Yeah, the, and it, you know it's more like a background thing. It wasn't yeah. like the kids all ran up to the stage and danced and stuff. It was just sort of like a cute thing that happened in the background. So um, I, I wouldn't want to judge any grown adults love of their childhood or Billy Bob, the, <laughs> the singing bear, but to each his own. Yes, but before, before this documentary, I don't know if it was that widely known to people, other than people that were nostalgic for it when they were a small child. But there weren't a lot of people talking about Showbiz, Showbiz Pizza or the Rock of Fire Explosion Band. Right. Um, this documentary came out, and then a couple years later, unrelated, we introduced the world to the infamous Dick the Birthday Boy picture. Mike discovered this old photo from Rich's birthday. And so we, uh, as a present, we have painstakingly uh, recreated this lovely shirt that he's wearing, and we're, we're gonna give it to him as a, a birthday <laughs> slash Halloween episode gift. Did you like steal my old family <laughs> photographs? Is there like an album of mine in your possession? This is creepy. Which I discovered in a pile of trash <laughs> in 2001 <laughs> or two. Okay. Uh, and uh, it was, Rich was throwing out family photos. <laughs> um, I, I, a lot of people know the story. Yeah. But he was throwing out family photos and there's just piles of Polaroids from his childhood that he was throwing in the trash. Mm -hmm. So I grabbed them and I saved them and one of them was the Dick the Birthday Boy photo. They're now famous, that's, that's uh, gone on to be more popular than us. There are people that have no idea that this is even connected to us and probably think our episode from 2013 is uh, a reference to this, but no, it did not exist on the internet before this. Right. And because that, this is actually Rich Evans. It's that's not actually a, not Rich a Evans. lie. Yes, <laughs> it is a real true picture of Rich Evans as Dick the birthday boy. <laughs> um, and it has been featured on awkward family photos, cursed images, uh, famously the Ellen Show. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, but I cannot take my eyes off Dick, Dick the, birth the birthday yeah. boy. <laughs> yep. Uh, back we're, before Ellen was canceled. Back before Ellen got canceled, and Julia Roberts, back before she got canceled, she said, um, I, I worked at Showbiz Pizza. And um, so people think that that's her in the costume. Yeah, some intern at Ellen just Googled Showbiz Pizza Bear. It's the first image that shows up, so they just used it. And it's, and it's funny. And now, now people think that the lore is that Julia Roberts is next to Rich Evans in this photo. It's not true. That's not Julia Roberts. Right. Julia Roberts, I think, grew up in the South. Yeah, um, like Georgia, Georgia or something. Yeah, and so uh, odds that she lived up in the Chicagoland area for a brief moment of time while working at a Showbiz Pizza, then moved back down, are highly improbable. Yes. You know who is in that costume, though? Meg Ryan. <laughs> Flash forward one year later to 2014, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, the video game is made. And there begins a, t a tangled tale of rights and movies and uh, everything else because uh, it becomes kind of messy after that. And two films emerged from the muck, one being Willy's Wonderland and one being the Banana Splits movie. Which has its own history because yes. Banana Splits was a Hanna-Barbera cartoon in like the 60s. No, not a cartoon. It was a live action. Oh, it was live action. That introduced cartoon. The only thing I, I like that's, I don't even know anything about it other than the theme song. The yeah. la, la, la. Like everybody knows that. Yeah. Um, it sort of, I mean, it predates us. Oh, yeah. Uh, by, um, by a long shot. It was 19, it ran from 68 to 70. It was brief. 
they were, they were people in costumes that ran around, they drove the little car, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, um, and, and then it was like interspersed with cartoons. Okay. The costumes were made by Sid and Marty Croft, mm. creators of puppets, and I think they did H.R. Puff and stuff, and you know, that, that was their thing. Those weird psychedelic uh, guy in costume shows. There, that was like a, a late 60s to late 70s mm. kind of thing. Jimmy, what happened to you? Why are you walking that way? I'm a mechanical boy Like a mechanical toy But with the Banana Splits, uh, that was like a property that some studio owned, wasn't doing anything with, because what do you do with them? So then someone says, oh hey, this Five Nights at Freddy's thing is popular. Let's, let's, we have this property, let's just make a horror movie based on this old property, because it's kind of like the, the Five Nights at Freddy's. Right, it's, it's a very bizarre history. There, there was a, a mention also that there was a comic book crossover with the, the, um, the Banana Sp Splits gang and the Suicide Squad. <laughs> I mean, there's this like sorted, <laughs> bizarre history with, with these characters. and. I think at one point it, it passed hands from Hanna-Barbera to, to Warner Brothers, and then... I think that's who put out the movie, right? Yeah, and then they're the ones who said, sure, let's do this, and... We'll make it really cheap. We'll make it really cheap, but uh, also the script for this uh, Banana Splits movie is supposedly, purportedly taken from a rejected script for the Freddy, Five Nights at Freddy's uh, movie. Okay. Which is why they're robots. Ah. I mean, on the TV show, they were just things. Right. You know, like living creatures. Living creatures. That, but, but, they they're robots in this. I assume they just did that because they wanted to make it closer to Five Nights at Freddy's, which is its own movie that's been in development hell for years. Uh, yes. Supposedly, it's coming out and shooting this year, coming out in like another year or two. Uh, which is well after the popularity of the video game has wore off. Can we also briefly mention, there's a five minute short on Hulu called The Hug. It's far better than either of these two it's features. It's far better. One, it gets to the point real quick. <laughs> it doesn't take up a lot of your time, but. Well, also aesthetically, it, it's much better. Yeah. It, it's, that's, well, we'll start talking about these movies now. Willy's Wonderland is fucking awful. The Banana Splits movie is not as awful. And then the hug, the five minute short, it, it, using that premise of evil animatronic kids show mascots is the one that nails that the best. Right. Um, they shot it in what looks like probably a real Chuck E. Cheese, or if it's a set, it's a damn good set, but they have the different areas all set up and it looks, it looks uh, like a believable location, which is already a, a notch above Willy's Wonderland which is just like a square set where you oh, have the awesome. dining area and there's a ball pit right next to it in the same room. And it, it doesn't feel like a believable place at all. Yeah. And that's the entire premise of your movie. Yeah, if you want to watch uh, Willy's Wonderland, just watch The Hug, because it has the exact same storyline. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's, a, there's a nasty little kid in The Hug who gets what he deserves because gosh darn it, he cheated at skee ball. <laughs> So he's a little bastard. Yes. He's throwing, he's put, he's climbed on the ski ball machine and he's throwing the balls in the top slot and he's getting all the tickets and he, it's his birthday, goddammit, he wants to see, and he, so he steals the guy, the janitor's keys or the manager or whatever and the manager knows the secret. Yeah, he says, don't go behind the curtain, the, the, the bear or whatever it is yeah. is taking a break. Right. And the kid sneaks back there and he gets what he deserves. And he knows the secret of the bear, which is, it is the bear costume. He looks exactly like Billy Bob. Yeah. Uh, is just a, facade for like a monster or a demon underneath and it eats the child. Mm -hmm. Great. Got it. It's perfect for a five minute short. Yes. It did, did just what it needed to do. And the, and the cost of monster looks good. The, yeah. Uh, it was designed by Stupid Buddy Studios. <laughs> oh, you did some research. I, I, well, I looked in the credits. The okay. credits were rolling. I was watching the credits and I recognized Stupid Buddy and I'm like, why is that familiar? They, they do the uh, stop motion and stuff for um, the Seth Green show, what is it? Oh, uh, Robot, Robot Chicken. Chicken. Oh, yeah, okay. so I think they do like effects and props and uh, makeup and whatnot. So it's effective, like the way the the, the fake face kind of falls off mm -hmm. and there's the demon face underneath. Yeah, it's perfect for what this is. Yeah, so I don't know why that was made. It said it was part of Huluween short films, and it, was it like a like a hey, we want to direct the Five the, Nights at Freddy's movie? Yeah, here's our here's our thing we made. 
you know, it was one of those kind of things. Who knows? Kind of like when they did the, uh, didn't they do like a test version of the Deadpool? They did a scene from Deadpool. And yeah. that's what ended up getting made into the movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right about that, Jay. I can't breathe! I don't know. We're, we're going to kind of talk about both films. Yes, we'll compare them. Yeah. Uh, Willy's Wonderland is closer to the concept of Five Nights at Freddy's, which is you have to survive overnight in this Freddy's place uh, with these evil mascots. Yes. And that's the premise of Willy's Wonderland. Nicolas Cage is playing kind of like the man with no name. He's passing through town. He's got a Western vibe. He doesn't talk through the whole movie. Uh, and the local townspeople, his, his tires go out on his car. They say, stay overnight in Willy's Wonderland, clean the place up, and we'll fix your car for free. So then he has to stay overnight with these evil animatronic characters who he very easily defeats in one scene after the other that is very repetitive and fucking boring and, and visually disgusting. Yeah, and, and, and not in a good way. No. You want your twisted showbiz pizza place to look gr uh, grungy and gross and disgusting, but... This is ugly in a low budgety kind of way. Yeah, well, like I said, the room, there's like a side room that they call the game room, even though it doesn't have hardly any games in it. Right. But the main room is, th there's the stage, which isn't a stage, it's just one side of the room. And then there's the tables where people sit to eat, and then the ball pit is right there. Yeah. And it's just like, they just slap things together. Like, eh, we gotta have a ball pit, eh, it's right there. And the puppets, they look evil from the beginning. You need that, and that's one thing I'll say about the Banana Splits movie, is you need that contrast of cutesy, colorful kids' characters that then do evil things. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's that, the, there's that one part, I think, where, oh no, that was the hug. He grabs the, he, he, once he starts hugging the little kid, mm -hmm. and then the, uh, the eyes roll back and they're blank white, mm -hmm. and oh, they yeah. come back and they're like bloodshot yeah. and disgusting. And, um, it takes its time to build that up. Yeah. In, in uh, Willy's Wonderland, Nicolas Cage is cleaning the bathroom and then the, like, the big like ape, ape character yeah. is just behind him and he just immediately starts fighting him without any reaction to what's happening. I mean, I guess they're going for that man with no name, stoic, silent character, but it, in the context of this movie, it doesn't work. Uh, Clint Eastwood talked. Okay. <laughs> you can get away with not talking, but I was thinking, especially after that first that bathroom fight, I was like, you need like a Bruce Campbell in this role. I was reminded of a lot of the Evil Dead movies. That's clearly like an influence. I'm gonna feast on your face. <laughs> but you need someone who is maybe like th thinks of himself as a badass or like a braggart but then is a complete buffoon in reality. Yeah. You, you need some sort of change in emotion or at least some sort of reaction to how bizarre what's happening is. And Nicolas Cage, he beats up that monster very easily and then just goes right back to cleaning, which I think is supposed to be funny. It gives you nothing to latch onto in the movie. Well, it's it's possibly one of the worst scripts I've seen turned into a movie. Yeah, it's it's indescribably bad, like and, you and said, uncreative, very uncreative. Um, and like you said, with the Nicolas Cage character, you need he either he's he's driving around, he he wants a sports car. This is Nicolas Cage's rider or requests for for being in the movie, right? Sure. I don't want to say any lines. I don't want to learn fucking dialogue for right. this shit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that, and it says Nicholas Cage had, I, I read some facts he about He was like it. a producer on the movie. That's that's <laughs> where you get you get money later. Yeah. If you just throw your name on it as a producer. Um, that's bullshit. He didn't do a, a single thing. <laughs> um, but he, he it's a Nicholas Cage always wanted to star in a in a no dialogue horror film. Or, you know, it's like, no, no, this isn't it. And that's a lie. He just didn't want to memorize lines. And he said, give me a sports car to drive around in. 
Make me look awesome. Make me look awesome. Um, give me the best hair dye around, <laughs> the best plugs, <laughs> and use that, that uh, computer to make my face look less old. <laughs> um, and, and uh, oh, and he also wanted to excessively drink beer. Which, which, That's not beer, Mike. It's soda. It's, en it's an energy drink. I, I thought there was going to be a payoff to that. Th th here's, here's the. He, he's yeah. constantly drinking it through the whole movie. I was like, "That's going to lead to something." An epic piss. <laughs> no, no. Here's, here's, here's the logic. Here's the logic in the script for that, Jay. Okay. Right. Right. One. There's two two points of logic to have him constantly drinking energy drinks at, at timed intervals. Mm -hmm. One, no human on Earth would agree to clean a nasty old building yeah. all night long without sleep, right? Sure. Most people sleep. That's true. Okay, so there's one. Why we does are it... talking about Nicolas Cage, though. He's well, a fucking weirdo. I'm talking about his character, not him personally. <laughs> um, Unless he's a robot or, you know, an alien or something, he needs to sleep. No one's going to say, yeah, uh, okay, well, I'm going to work for a couple hours, but, you know, once it gets dark, I'm just going to go to sleep and I'll meet you in the morning. I'm not cleaning every square inch of this nasty warehouse to fix my fucking flat tire. Right. Most people are reasonable yeah. and they need to sleep. Two, he defeats these robots, which which have no, or creatures, demons, what they're possessed, uh, whatever. They're um, possessed by the spirits of dead serial killers that opened the restaurant originally. Yes, yeah. yes, and worship Satan. And worship Satan. Uh, so they're possessed, right? And But they have no ability to kill you. Mm -hmm. B but they've had that ability to kill other people for years. Yeah. Decades. Yeah, the, the town is all in on it, and they give this thing uh, out of towners as sacrifices. So Nicholas Cage, seemingly a regular man, you know, he's not he's not super buff, he's not a MMA fighter. We don't introduce him as that or as a, a, a special forces green beret. I just got back from fucking Afghanistan. And I'm looking to whoop some ass. He's just a guy, yeah, a man with no name, Clint Eastwood character. Um, and he defeats these things very easily. By whacking them with a broom handle. And yeah. that is because he's amped up on energy drinks. That's the reason the energy drinks are there. Oh, God. See, I thought it was going to turn out that he has some sort of history with these things or connection to them where, like, he was prepared to fight them. And that's why the other people they've killed is because they're caught off guard. They're just staying overnight in this place. Oh my God, they came to life and they get killed immediately. But he kills them with absolutely no issues and no problems. So I thought it was going to turn out that he secretly went there for the purpose of killing them. Maybe he has a long history of killing demons. They, they no, he just his, kills uh, them. His daughter back in the day. Something, or... anything, anything. He was and that's part the of the cult, of and movie. they kicked him out. Sure. Yeah. But, oh, you he were, has a you, personal vendetta. You were expecting way too much. I was expecting a story. The entirety behind it is: Wouldn't it be cool if Nicolas Cage killed Showbiz Pizza Bear? And that's what they pitched their movie on. Yeah. So they pitched it to him. They said, "You're going to be like the drifter that comes through town, who's badass, and you don't have to say a single line of dialogue." That's going to be our gimmick too. Mm -hmm. Nicolas Cage doesn't speak a single line of dialogue in the whole movie. Well, wow, that's some kind of fucking achievement. <laughs> really? No, it's not. It makes your movie much worse. Yeah. Because, like you said, if he if he was a braggart or had some kind of history, like like he was a, a ex soldier, ex marine, or something like that, and then he gets in there and he fights the first Billy Bob, right? And and the, maybe there's some teens in there with him, and he's like, "Don't worry, I got this." And he gets his ass kicked, mm -hmm. and he gets knocked down a peg. Yeah. Like eventually, at some point during the movie, you know, your third act drop when things go bad for your protagonist, and they have to work their way out of a problem. That occurs in a movie. Not in this movie. But he just beats up one after the other. I was shocked at the ending. I thought because he he finally gets there's like the main character Willie. Mm -hmm. And so, like, we get to the final confrontation with him. And I was like, okay, they're going to do something special for this fight, right? And then Nicolas Cage just beats him with a stick. And then it's over. I was stunned at the, the laziness of everything involved with the story of the movie. Right, right. It was shocking. It was shockingly bad.
the 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 vaguest resemblance of anything screenplay wise is the girl has a backstory of her parents being killed and the the old lady cop rescuing her mm -hmm. as a baby or a child or whatever and then so her sole mission in life is to on a nightly basis try to burn down Willie's Willie's Wonderland or whatever. How long has she been trying to do this? She tried it once this? and got caught. Yeah. Uh, uh, how often, how hard is it to light gasoline on fire? Without, <laughs> I mean, it's just after, you know, 15 years yeah. is this, or 10 years, is this your first time trying to do it? Or did you try it the night before? Have you ever and tried I, to inform anyone outside of the town that this is happening? Like basic things. Yeah, uh, 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 people are missing. Their last stop was in your town. Contact the FBI, uh, you know, yeah, but they, it's, I don't know, they say the town has no internet or uh, whatever, <laughs> fucking whatever. Whatever fucking excuse they can come up with to get away with being as lazy as possible. Right, so so she, she wants to try again to burn down the place, so she invites five or six of her friends. No, I'm not, it's the truth. Yeah, you are very lucky. Well, maybe you should have a girl, Mark. One of which has a crush on her, the boy, but he just dies, and then everyone just dies. It doesn't matter. Then there's like the the um, I don't. I'm sure it was a tongue in cheek kind of thing where the two teens go off to have sex, where it's like a trope. Yeah. And then in the party room, in right? the party room, but the, even though they they already know that the monsters are killing people in there, it'd be one thing if they weren't it's a aware cliche, of that. Yet. Jay, it's funny. You got to present it as funny, then. But it's like the the. The most pathetic excuse <laughs> for a sex scene, and the most pathetic sex scene. It, Everything about it, it's terrible. Yeah, it's just like they're just like dry humping on the ground, yeah. like supposing they're having sex. Just don't even do it. Do something different. Do something creative. I don't know. This movie was just atrocious. I'm sorry. And visually, it was disgusting. The color grading on it. Everything's just like greenish blue and disgusting looking. And like I said, you need that contrast with the creatures, with the the puppets. Which was one of the things that was kind of amusing about the Banana Splits movie. Which is not a movie I would really recommend, but in comparison to Willy's Wonderland, it's a masterpiece. Oh, yeah. Um, but the, the creatures constantly feel like kids show characters in that. And the setup in that is that they're, they're robots, they're animatronic, and their they're programming gets fucked up on the last day that they're filming the show ever. The show's being canceled. And so they start killing people. But they're doing it in, like, over-the-top violent ways yeah. that's kind of fun to watch. Oh, yeah. It's, and it's kind of disturbing and weird and <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> I mean, oh, my God. The, all the different little avenues of the script yeah. are just There's mind There's actual characters in the script. I know. There's, there's a family. They have a, a stepdad who's a dickhead. Mm -hmm. and, there's the girl that's there with her dad who wants to try and introduce her daughter to, to the producers of the show. He's like a showbiz parent. You have characters. You have the, the vlogging couple that want to vlog the whole thing. And The family dynamic is they actually tried. Mm -hmm. Like the mother, the father died a while ago. And so the last 10 years, she's been with this other guy, remarried. He's a dick. The little boy, he, you know, he's like an asshole to the little boy. And the boy has an older brother. They're not, they're half brothers. Um, and so he's like taking him under his wing, you know, and then you find out the husband's cheating. A spoiler. <laughs> um, um, Nobody and, cares. But then you got the, the multiple characters. That, there's a producer lady with the glasses. There's Paige, who's the audience Paige. Yeah. Um, who kind of has a romance with the older brother. I mean, there's so much going on. <laughs> it's the most basic of story writing of screenplays. But, right. But... For that movie, it's fine, and it's something, as opposed to Willy's Wonderland. Well, yeah, Willy's Wonderland. And Wa they set up, because uh, they, they go there for a taping of the show, and they have like almost like a Double Dare-esque obstacle course. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, fun obstacle course. You run through slime and all this stuff. And then that comes back in the third act, where it's like the, the horror version of yeah, that obstacle it course. Pays off later. It pays off. <laughs> It's a competent script for what it is. Yeah. And, and yeah, oh, after watching Willy's Wonderland, fucking anything is. <laughs> but um, for, for what it was trying to do, and it, it made use of all the different, like all the characters weren't just evil. There's one of the um, uh, Banana Splits gang who is good. Yeah. And so there's a little twist there. Um, there's, there's just more 
things going on, more to do, more set pieces. They go to different locations and in it, the and studio. It, and it takes it seriously enough where it works as camp. <laughs> Three cheers for Rebecca! Hip, hip, hooray! Like, they know it's not serious, but they're, they're presenting it as serious. Yes. And it's kind of amusing. Uh, when you get to the third act and they have, like, all those children enslaved. Right. And they're making them watch the horror version of the show. Like, that was funny. Yeah. And the mom has an arc. She kind of becomes a badass. Right. There's her, fun stuff her, in it. Um, her shirt gets caught for a second. And so it just <laughs> flies off. And so she's got the, the Captain Picard tank top. She, <laughs> she turns into that mode. Yeah. They didn't shy away from uh, doing good gore effects. Mm -hmm. Like the, the first kill, the one of the banana splits grabs like a big lollipop. Oh, yeah. And I thought, oh, for sure he's going to stab him in the ear or the eye with the sharp end of the lollipop, but hey, hey, they're one step ahead of me. <laughs> he sticks the, the wide end of the lollipop in his mouth and it lodges in its throat in the guy's throat. Yeah. And it's like blood is coming up everywhere. And then the, the part where the vlogger gets sawed in half. Yeah. And he's, and of course, all the intestines fall out. And it, it's goofy looking, it's not realistic looking, um, but the deaths are weird like the guy and they're the, all different yeah the the like the stage dad the, uh, the oh yeah he he gets sprayed in the face with like aerosol and he, he gets burns all over his face but he and still the, lives and the character's like dancing around yeah. him while his head's on fire right <laughs> at first it looked bad but then they had a real appliance that was on fire. yeah there was a at, composite shot that wasn't great no but. no but um so for the rest of the movie that guy's face is just horribly <laughs> burned and, and then he's forced to do the the the, the, oh, the obstacle course, the obstacle yeah. double dare thing, um, while his face is burnt, <laughs> and I he he once he fell in the goo like the slime like Nickelodeon slime kind of goo, and I just wanted him to go oh it burns it burns <laughs> like uh, just like just to make it just more horrific, <laughs> so I laughed quite a bit during um, uh, the banana splits movie. It gets a gold medal when compared to Willy's Wonderland, which may have been the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, and all the, the action in Willy's Wonderland, talking about like the pacing of things, like so much shaky cam, like constant cutting. It's everything about it is so visually ugly. Yeah. From the color grading, to the editing, to the lighting of the movie, to the cheap ass set. Your whole movie takes place on that one set. Make it a good set. It's good advice. Oh, what are you looking around for? Oh, I just thought I heard a noise in the, in the back. Oh my God, that whole wall is shaking. Jesus. That doesn't seem right. I don't know, yeah, that's weird. Uh, it is an old building. That's true. And I was confused about Nicolas Cage between, he goes back and forth. He kills a, a creature and then he goes back to cleaning and then he goes into the kitchen where there is for some reason a pinball machine. Like why is that not in the game room? Why is he playing this pinball machine in the kitchen? And why is he playing it at all? Again, I thought that was a setup for something where there was some reason he was playing it. He went to Willy's Wonderland as a kid and he never defeated it. And so now he's back to defeat the machine or something. Beat his high score. He just goes back there and plays it for no reason. Oh, Jay, it's like you've seen a movie before. <laughs> I mean, why have these things in the movie? Other than you gotta fill 90 minutes because Nicolas Cage beating up these mascots isn't enough uh, material for your feature. Well, they, it was an official Willy's Wonderland pinball machine, right? Why was it in the kitchen? I don't know why it was in the kitchen. And why were there no games in the game room? Because here's why. <laughs> I have answers to all these questions. One, they knew a guy who custom made pinball machines. Mm. Uh, he custom makes them. And so I, I could make one for you. Oh, cool. Okay, here it is. Oh, wow, it's neat. Where are we going to put it? In the game room. Well, we don't have any other games. It would be weird if it was just by itself in the game room. Well, maybe it's in the kitchen. Maybe the, like the, the, the dishwashers use it when they're on their break. Uh, we got to use it because... I knew a guy who made custom pinball <laughs> machines. Okay, how about N uh, Nick Cage plays it every now and then in, in the movie just so we could show close-ups of it. Yeah. 
because we got a real Willy's Wonderland. Okay. Why don't we fill the game room with tons of games? Because a third of our budget went to Nicolas Cage. That's why. I'd say over half of their budget went to Nicolas Cage. Then, and, and it's really expensive to rent and leave these games here. And pay, they want insurance on them because they might get damaged during the production. And the That's when someone steps in and says, but this is the concept for your whole movie. Uh, sad to say, I, I'm baffled by the, uh, I think it's 60% Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my God. And then a 78% audience. Wow. They're like a wild ride from start to fin And I'm just like. See, I hate, I hate movies like this where they're like, they're trying to sell it as like a new kind of cult movie. It's so crazy. Nicolas Cage, he's like a, a human meme. Mm -hmm. And you put him in your movie and you don't have to do any more work than that. Where people are already sold on the movie. They already know they're going to like it based on that. And no matter how fucking terrible it is, they're just like, but it's so crazy because Nicolas Cage beats up puppets. It's like, no, you have to put some level of creativity into your movie. And, you know, we all have our, our guilty pleasures. You know, uh, I enjoy stupid things uh, here and there, but... Uh, I, I can just smell, smell the lazy, and I can I can just feel the the grime all over my body yeah. after watching that. And 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 as soon as it started, this is how cynical I am. I see the car driving. Yeah. I want an old Jewish movie if you if I drive around in a fucking sports car, because I'm Nicolas Cage. I don't drive in anything but a fucking sports car. Blah 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 blah. blah. I was in that movie Drive Angry. <laughs> uh, I'll only be in a movie if I would never ever have to take my sunglasses off, drive a fucking sports car, and I'm a fucking badass in a leather jacket. <laughs> so, here comes a sports car. Yeah. And I'm, I'm counting the seconds of screen time. Not Nicolas Cage, not Nicolas Cage. Man steps out, boots hit the ground. Not Nicolas Cage, not. Trunk opens. Uh, shot ends right before we say, not Nicolas Cage. Not. Hands reach in, grab an energy drink. Not Nicolas Cage, not Nicolas Cage. Mouth? Uh, we panned up too much. We got to bring him in. Yeah. Cut. Uh, bring him out of the trailer. He's drunk. He's drunk. <laughs> He's passed out. He just has to stand there and not fall down. Okay, fine. He's done for the day. Well, and to make things even worse, this is one of those like uh, uh, early access movies that they do now since theaters aren't open. It's to trick you. Where they charge $20. Do not. Pay money for this. Mm -hmm. Do not get fooled. Ignore the ratings and the reviews. Trust us. It's not wacky and crazy. It's one of the worst and most boring things I've seen. I almost didn't finish it, and that's saying a lot for me. I watch so much trash. The death scenes in um, uh, the Banana Splits movie were far, far better. Yeah. Each one's different and creative. Yeah. Uh, the story goes in different areas, you know, takes some different turns here and there. M a, a all around much better movie. Characters grow and change. Yeah. Although if you're somebody who grew up in like the early 70s and has like fond memories of the Banana Splits gang, <laughs> I'd probably be really confused. So bizarre. Yeah. Such a bizarre backstory to that movie. Like mm -hmm. this wacky kids show and all the different like incarnations of it. Yeah. But it makes sense that if it was a temporary or an early draft of a script for Five Nights at Freddy's, that it makes sense. Yeah. Speaking of the robots, that's something that neither movie gets right. They never feel like animatronic creatures. They just feel like guys in suits. Right. They do a little bit better in uh, Banana Splits movie. Occasionally, they kind of move like robots. Yeah, yeah, they have that walk. And they add some sound effects, but they're, yeah, you could tell. But Willy's Wonderland. I mean, the one, there's like the, the fairy ballerina one. Where she oh, just yeah. has a head on, and then her body is just like it's human hands. They didn't even yeah. fucking try. Right. There's a lady running around with that. I forgot about that yeah. character. Oh, and that whole ending, the fairy princess jumps on top of the car, or blows it up somehow. Yeah. And it's just like this terrible, terrible effect. It looks like suburban Sasquatch. <laughs> and that's my go-to comparison <laughs> for lazy plug-in effects. Gotcha! Oh. 
that's the draw of low budget movies. Like you look at like old Roger Corman movies and stuff made in the eight, like when we watch a best of the worst movie, when they blow up a car and they really blow it up, it's always exciting and it's fun because you say, oh, they blew up a car. And it's always in the middle of the desert yeah, or which, a field. Which adds to the, the amusement. And right. this, they're in an empty parking lot. Right, yeah, buy, buy a, a $600 car, get a pyrotechnics guy, I guess you gotta get a permit and you gotta pay money and blah, 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 blah. But that's, blah, blah. that's the movie. These are things you put in a movie to make them interesting. This, this movie rides the line between movie and scam. Yeah. Although a mild recommendation for the Banana Splits movie, even though it's a couple of years old now. Yeah, I think it came out last year or the year before. But if you're looking for this type of movie, that's the go-to one. That's, that's, yeah, if and, you have to choose. Yeah, until the Five Nights at Freddy movie comes out, if that ever happens. You should make a showbiz pizza place horror-themed movie. An official one? Yeah, yeah who owns the rights to showbiz pizza anymore? Uh, well, uh, what should I call I it? guess Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese bought them, so they must own them? I don't know. I don't know how that works. They won't make a, if, if Chuck E. Cheese is still around, I think they went bankrupt, though. But if they are still around, they won't make a Chuck E. Cheese horror movie. But revive Billy Bob, yeah, make oh, a horror film. Here, here's, here's, here's the big, big, big money, Jay. Oh. Chuck E. Cheese versus Billy Bob. <laughs> like Freddy versus Jason. Oh, that, yeah. That's where the real money is. It's true. I love it. Let's do it. Okay. Start making some phone calls. <clears throat> Hello, Nicholas Cage. Do you like money?